So now we go to this problem. The following items were taken from the financial statements of Saintly Inc. over a three-year period. So these are the figures. Compute for the following. So we will compute for trend percentages. So he here is the here is the figures presented in the uh, in the Excel file. So if we will uh, consider 2006 as the base year here, what will happen is that you would go 2006 like net sales 300,000 divided by the base year of 300,000. You will get, of course, 100% or 1. Of course, that is applicable uh, for all figures that we will consider for 2006. So 186,000 divided by 186,000, of course, that would also be 100%. And then 114,000 divided by 114,000, that would also be 100%. Now, for year 2007, you would get 336,000 for net sales divided by 300,000, which is uh, net sales from 2006. Since 2006 is our base year, we will get 112%. And for cost of goods sold, we will do the same thing. So we will get 110.75% and 114.04%. For 2008, we will do the same thing. 355,000 divided by the base here is still 2006, so 300,000, we will get 118.33%, while for cost of goods sold, 214,000 divided by 186,000, 115.05. For to gross profit, 141,000 divided by 114,000, we will get 123.68%. So that is if 2006 is the base year. Actually, it can do we only use the earliest year as the base year? No, we can actually use 2007. So if 2007 is the base year, we will compute for the percentages of 2006 as 300,000 divided by 336,000. And then 186 divided by 206,000 and... 114,000 divided by 130,000 and then the figures for 2007 would be all 100%. So all figures for the base year would be automatically 100%. So for 2008, 355,000 divided by 336,000, 214,000 divided by 206,000 and 141,000 divided by 130,000. So we have this if we will consider 2007 as our base year. You can actually consider 2008 as well. So now we go to common size financial statements. So in common size financial statement, we translate peso amounts to percentages, similar to horizontal and trend percentages. But in this, we indicate the relative size of an item in proportion to the whole. So we convert uh, the financial statement for one period in terms of a certain amount in the financial statement. So the analysis here is vertical analysis. So, when we do this for the statement of financial position, we consider the amounts as percentage of the total assets. While for the comprehensive income, it is percentage of sales. So, usually these are the highest figures for the, uh, for the financial statements that are mentioned. For financial position, the highest amount is the total assets, right? which is similar to the total liabilities and owner's equity. For comprehensive income, the highest figure here should be the topmost sales. Actually, we consider here net sales. 
So why do we do common size financial statement? So in order, uh, actually the thing is when we compare two companies of different size and how to how they maintain their balances, how they manage their uh, their working capital and so on. The thing is, uh, we cannot compare two companies of different differing size because they do not have uh, the same uh, capitalization. One way to make that possible is to actually uh, convert them into common size statements so that we will be able to determine how how the, the working capital of these companies are maintained and so on. Other thing is, uh, in order to comprehend or visualize the change in individual items that have taken place from year to year in relation to the total assets, total liabilities, and owner's equity or total net sales. Actually, this helps us a lot in determining whether our balances are actually uh, actually higher or lower than how they should be maintained. For example, we want to keep uh, inventory balance at a minimum, cash balance as well, and receivable balances. And if we see that they are getting larger and larger relative to the size of the total assets, then you might want to do something. So this was mentioned already. Compare statements of two or more companies or statement of one company with the statements for an entire industry and evaluate their current financial position and operating results. And point out efficiencies and inefficiencies that might otherwise go unnoticed. Because for example, if we actually keep our cash balance at the same level, but our asset balance is getting lower and lower, it means that we are keeping uh, more cash as a percentage of our total assets than what we should. So steps in preparing financial statements, common size financial statement. For finance statement of financial position, each item is converted as a percentage of total assets. How do we do that? For example, the cash balance, cash divided by total asset, and then inventory divided by total asset, and then up to total asset divided by total asset, which will yield 100%. Now, if we call that a base year for trend percentages, we call these items, total assets and net sales, as base amounts for common size statements so statement of comprehensive income we use net sales or net operating revenue so let's answer this problem so the comparative balance sheet of gear company appears below so using horizontal analysis uh, we show the percentage change of each item and also using vertical analysis. So I have already uh, transferred this to the to this uh, Excel sheet. So these are the same amounts. How do we do vertical analysis? Again, uh, the value here, current asset, divided by total asset which is 1,000. So we will get 33% and then plant assets 670 divided by total assets and then total assets divided by total assets. So we'll get 100%. So for 2015, we will do the same thing, but we will use the 2015 total assets as our base amount. 280 divided by 800 and then 520 divided by 800 and finally 800 divided by 800 if you see that your base amount is not 100 percent then you might be doing something wrong in your computation so let's finish this computation across the end so for current liabilities and long-term debt and common stock and then retained earnings so for total liabilities and owner's equity it should also be a hundred percent 
So in here, we can now we can now see uh, we can now analyze uh, how well the company has managed its assets uh, for across the years. So we will see here that uh, there is a decrease in current assets. Is a decrease in current asset a good thing or a bad thing? Actually, it means that you have a decline in your investment in current assets as a percentage of your total assets. Uh, if we will consider just the figures, we will see that there is actually an increase in the current assets. But as uh, when we compare it to the total assets, uh, the current assets that we are holding or maintaining are less than uh, less than less than last year in relation to the total assets so we can also compute for the horizontal analysis so 330 minus 280 then we divide this by 280 which is the prior year balance so in here, we see that there is an increase in the current asset balance, but the vertical analysis indicates that we are maintaining actually less in relation to the in relation to the total assets of the company. So using the same formula for plant assets and total assets, we see that there is an increase in total assets, which uh, which is higher as compared to the uh, to the increase in current assets that is why the percentage of investment that we have in current assets for the current year is less than the prior year so we use the same formula for the other amounts of course we would have the same increase in liabilities and owners equity so this would be the answer for our uh, for the questions in this problem so here it is for financial ratio analysis uh, this is uh, actually the last part of the financial statement analysis that we will do uh, financial ratios actually are comparison of two significant figures taken from the financial statement so this actually shows the relationship of these balances. Uh, this is significant because uh, you can uh, you can actually see some of the indications in the balance uh, in the financial position and the income statement by using financial ratios. So this ratios will be able to let us see uh, what is not visible uh, to us by basically just looking the finance looking at the financial statements like uh, how much uh, how much peso is available per current liability that we hold will we be if assuming that we go bankrupt right now will we be able to pay all our creditors or at least those which we are legally liable as of the period. So we have different ratios actually, and uh, these ratios are dependent on the purpose, uh, the purpose why they are held or they are computed. Liquidity ratios, uh, these are ratios that measure the firm's ability to meet cash needs as they arise. What are example of this quick ratio, current ratio, cash ratio. So these are usually ratios uh, in comparing uh, the currently maturing liabilities to the liquid assets that we hold. Activity ratios measure the liquidity of specific assets and efficiency in managing assets such as accounts receivable, inventory, and fixed assets. So activity ratios are actually measures of how well we convert uh, these items into what they are intended for. Like for example, how soon do we convert receivables to cash? How soon do we convert inventory into sales? How soon do we convert as well fixed assets? Because 
we invest in fixed assets so that we would have sales. Leverage ratios are measure of the extent of firms financing. So this ones go to the creditors uh, for their uh, for their peace of mind as to how much how many people are are they in competition with in terms of the assets that the firm the company maintains and profitability ratio so overall performance of the firm and its efficiency in managing assets liabilities and equity so this ends our discussion for financial statement analysis we will have an extensive solving for ratios and as well as horizontal vertical and trend percentages on on our next video so see you then